Hello everybody and welcome to the second video of Friday. This is a very important video because we're going to be talking about the input issues. Kabam have responded, they've given transparency and we've got uh, a very important deep dive type video. You're probably wondering, Rich, you didn't make uh, this uh, into the MCN and it's funny enough, as soon as we were doing a podcast, Dan said about it and I was like, oh my god, this is very extensive and it will need a full video to it and that is what we're doing. Especially because this is this is in a nutshell addressing from Kabam's standpoint reports of input issues and broken controls and why Kabam have been able to have well I was going to say success but where they've uh, well success and failure we'll, we'll kind of go at that in this video the first thing is that in a few days we'll be removing the option to opt out of the input system refractor from the settings menu we don't anticipate the change being particularly noticeable for some of us however we wanted to take the opportunity to increase transparency and communication on the topic of inputs and bugs could you dumb it down and shade and in a nutshell the tldr of this is that the input system will be fully implemented this month we have increased bug investigation these are not the same issues we've seen before we are increasing the availability of a fight reporting tool to some some players please report specific details when inquiring about bugs which is going to be helpful but at the same time you know um input issues have been an issue for a long time especially since uh, 2021 and we had the the big incident and you know it's just been coming up to two years since uh, the input refractor the input system has been completely reworked or you know it, it has been very noticeable the biggest problem we have as a community and as we have with Kabam is communication. Kabam want to explain to you that the way that this particular input issues is translated is it is not input issues. It's its own. These have their own type of mini issues associated with them. But in a nutshell, they feel like they are inputs. Say it in English, duck. So what am I talking about? To kind of go further on that, it's like when you tap on the screen and you go, I clearly did a block, but in fact, it may be a case that the enemy champion has a longer animation window than it shouldn't have, um, and that is necessarily causing the problems that you experience. I'm not saying that is or isn't, it's just a problem when it comes to the lines of communication between Kabam and what we're trying to say as a problem we're seeing. I mean, looking at it, it's like it feels to me like it's all input issues because when you... It's like a trust element of when you tap on a screen, you input something to kind of see an action. And if that action doesn't feel like, you know, is responsive, that's how we see it. But that's not how Kabam see it. And that's the problem where we're just not kind of synergizing with Kabam on th this particular thing of what we see versus what Kabam see or how we interpret it. And that's another thing, interpretation. Interpretation is a tricky thing. Like, we interpret as players, like, especially if you're non-spending, you go and save up your units to, uh, to kind of invest into things that are going to be beneficial for you in the game. Command side of things is they interpret units to be used for things like revives and health potions. And that is, again, where we're just not kind of coming together on these particular things. How we see it versus how Kabam see it. I'm not saying that. I'm just kind of like putting in a bit more perspective here. In this particular post, Kabam feel that their level of like information they get from a reporting standpoint is not sufficient enough. So if you are going to post something on the forums or contact Kabam, it's important to kind of give them as much information as possible. Yes, did we know for the last eight years that Kabam wanted a certain line of communication? No, we did not. But let's kind of give them the benefit of doubt and go, okay, from now, let's give them what they're looking to have. They don't want to see input issues or control issues, but what they want to do is find out more info as uh, include attacking champion, defending champion, game mode, action that occurred immediately prior to the potential bug device you're playing on, and any other details that include about the specific uh, encounter, those particular things. It is important to give them that level of information yes as i said we're going to try and i don't think it's going to clear up because we still as i said for me looking at when i tap on the screen it's an input and then it's like looking at right well i tapped on the screen it didn't work but according to kabam that's not that's not how they perceive that particular bug from you as a player and we'll kind of clear that up in a minute as to why kabam kind of look at it from an engineering standpoint like it could be a window a stun window a champion's animation and so many other things as i said we need to clear that up in a second there's one thing that really stands out right here and if you remember from an mcn a little while ago inputs and also 
finger tracking being very important. Kamam say the most you the most helpful posts we've seen include video and we've seen the rare occasion where players have finger tracing including with their video. We acknowledge that this is a this, that this will be rare and cha and challenging to acquire as we never really know when we'll be impacted by a bug. But yeah, that particular info is really, really important because it does show things. A perfect example of this is on screen right now. This is taken from Super's post on Twitter, which clearly shows that he is swiping, but the champion just stands static. Now, regardless if people were going to say, oh, well, you know, is it meant to be the placement on the device? You don't know that. You don't know the device he uses. But at the same time, it looks 100% Now, a good example of that can be found on screen right now, where this is taken from Super's Twitter post, and look, like, he's taken a swipe, and the champion, which he was using a ghost at the time, just stands static. Now, in Kabam's way of looking at this, they may go, oh, this was meant to be a post-special attack window, or something, or a... They'll probably find a way to look at this as an excuse as to why this is the thing and why this is a bug with maybe a, a specific champion. Maybe they even refer to it as a uh, a post-recoil static bug. But for us, this is, you know, this is an input issue. This is a controls issue. And this is the, the big kind of like tough thing that we have as a community to kind of um, sympathize. I don't know. It's really tough, especially because when you look at something like, you know, you play with a controller like on a console, when you kind of like, you, you click on a button and move your character around, you kind of expect that that is going to work. And for most games, that is the case. And you don't have these kind of element of things. Maybe you have things like hitbox issues or you have other kind of like elements to it. But a lot of the time it's timing. And if you if you kind of click on something with a controller or move around something with a stick, you expect it to work as an instant. And I guess this is a tough thing from how the game can be engineered and kept consistently because a lot of things break, which we're going to read up on now, how Kabam are doing things behind the scenes with, with dealing with input control issues. Now, Kabam do go into detail as to like how they deal with bugs. Some fixes require quite a bit of investigation. Some are easily found once pointed in the right direction. Some fixes can be added to the current build directly. Some require a hot fix or a new build to be implemented. Same thing this month when it comes to the relics issue. And also a few other little things as well. Some require that hot fix. I think the relics issue requires a hot fix. But then there's others like the compensation issue, which is kind of like a... I, think a lot easier to fix which then we got the um the compensation out last night so it's um a little bit more easier to do than than others and kabam obviously go into detail and say that it's important that you know the team is constantly investigating and squashing bugs yes there's there's always kind of like a thing like you know if it's in a player's favor do kabam kind of fix the uh, bug yes quickly and then others not so much and stuff like that especially when it comes to like exploitable things and some and bunny is not exploitable things um but yeah, like, um, obviously they're fixing bugs. Some people may say, well, they're not fixing my bugs. And I guess this is the thing, like, the report's really good. I don't, I want to read in some of these and kind of let you know, like, the stuff. I mean, you can read it for yourself. Um, there are some interesting notes here. There are some really weird, interesting swipe patterns in this recording. They don't seem to cause any issue, but it might be worth following up at a later date. There's a clear dodge action at whatever seconds in the middle of a long SP2. Not sure why the player would do that. Perhaps it's the input system flushing out an old input sequence. And this is the biggest problem. What Kabam are doing right here is they're interpreting the way you're playing, which is a problem. If Kabam are interpreting the way that a player is playing, like um, if I was getting hit by an SP2, uh, maybe I'd swipe back midway and go into a block um, because you can swipe within that animation. I mean, I'm going to try and uh, evade as much as possible. But for whatever reason, if it's a bit tough or I kind of feel like I'm not, I'm, I'm more than likely going to get hit by an SP2, then I might kind of swipe back and go into a block, which is something of an issue at the moment where it's not working correctly. But again, this is, goes down to interpretation. Kabama saying this is how it's meant to be, that you shouldn't be able, you should be being hit by that SP2, where in other cases, you can swipe in that small little window before the SP2 is activated and the any projectile or the champ, enemy champion the defender moves out of you, that you can swipe back, go into a block. That could be a thing where, again, we're having this problem with Kabam, understanding that players play the game in a way that they feel is... Um, best for their skill set for how they want to interpret the fight the interaction but then Kaban will set ai to kind of move in a certain way that they feel that players will I, again i don't want to go too much into this because we are literally going down a theological line that is just 
this game doesn't need that level of mental load on this particular stuff. It's it, We just go down a completely weird path with this. The ending analysis on this particular report is the following. In this example, the player perceives that they have control again after the previous incoming hit. The character stands idle for a couple of frames, but the data-driven in hit, in hit stun window is still active. As far as the tech is concerned, everything is functioning as expected, but it's easy to see why the player expects to be able to dodge here. Reviewing a recording of my repro attempt also showed that the character is still in the medium to recoil state. It never actually transitions to idle. That's very interesting. Biggest problem we have with a lot of this is the word perception. As I said, something going to crop up in this particular video a lot. How we perceive our playing versus how Kabam perceive the uh, the way that we're playing against it. The, I mean, a good example is like the particular uh, the, the video that I just showed a moment ago. Um, how that I mean that that does it like a bug, and I really wish Kabam would have, have like seen that one. I kind of answered in here against it because I kind of feel it's the strongest piece of evidence as to like inputs not working and how say a um, what looks like it could be post recoil from a special attack which was seen uh, and like an animation that kind of fixed the character in place and but mainly the word perception as I said how we perceive our response how we move against champions defenders is uh, is is down to like a minute piece of accuracy on um, on this particular subject it's made worse when there are clear bugs that are around it which is a problem because it's like we change the way that we input based on the defenders in their current state which is which is annoying because we, we kind of like go it's a lot more mental load to go okay well now i know that kingpin has a or this champion has a small window after a certain attack to throw something because there's actually a medium animation being broken um it's tough. It is. It's, it's gonna. It's. It's a tough thing to kind of like go. I must record every single fight because I just don't know whether or not something's gonna be a bug or not. And it's like I can't live in that world. I need to be able to just kind of like play the game that I'm passionate and I like, and and just kind of not have to worry quite so much about these particular things, especially if I'm perceiving that I'm playing a certain way, but in fact. Command uh, perceiving that I should be playing in a different way. That's again, it becomes like it, it's it's kind of, kind of weird. It really weird. Spare me your medical mumbo jumbo. The main thing Kabam have to hold accountable to is what they plan to do as a result. Now, there's not the most ideal solutions to these particular issues, and I'm sure players would look at this and go like, well, I am I would be, you know, I want revives and health potions for the loss that I had with the champion, or at the same time, I want it fixed so when I swipe, it would work. And that's, again, the, this, this thing about perception is a difficult one. How Kabam perceive what we report and what uh, we perceive that we're kind of like you know playing the game we're not synergizing at the moment one day we might but here's the thing how kabam deal with it is going to be really important and what they say is with this is that the the over the, the final thing the conclusions is that the bug has been sent to the animation team to remove frames at the end of the animation that make it look like the character is idling so it's that standing is the, the standing statics it's the not finishing up of the animation it's being pounced on ri ridiculously so that's that's the thing about again we're talking about like kabama seeing this from this is this is a character bug because of the way the animation hasn't properly finished therefore giving you the perception that it's fine to go in and attack and there's lying the problem that we're seeing because we would be clean into attack but it is not the case because the champion is bugged from an animation perspective giving us the false hope that when we rush in we're actually going to be spanked but in any case, as, as we're going to go through just reading some more of this stuff and kind of reacting and kind of giving some thoughts and perspectives, why don't Kabam for doing this, right? Doing a level of transparency that we haven't seen before. But as I said, this is something that if you, do, if you did this in 2021, like June 2021 going into the end of the year, I mean, I did do stuff to communicate, but this is the, thing, this is the first time me learning of the extent of this. And But if this is a new process of how they're actually dealing with the levels of investigation, then this is better. This is a bit more analytical. This is very much data-driven, and it's very much given the glimpse into how uh, engineers uh, look into this particular um, sequencing and stuff. So why don't I command on this for finally giving us some transparency and information. Now, there is a more extensive one right here, uh, when it comes to a Joe Fixit interaction with a Ghost Rider. I'm not going to read all of it, but it 
does give you like again some kind of really cool things especially from you know the other ones like they try and go back to previous builds in order to kind of do a level of comparison against it and especially to get and find out um you know level of perception same champions being used and stuff like that but again uh, this is the most thing that i think people watching this will be important uh, find more important is well how does it how does it work from kabam actually dealing with something and getting to an end point with it so it's time to end up the video with this and Kabam are asking for better lines of information when they are doing these particular looking at these particular reports. There will be a uh, tool, the report issues tool, which will be provided to everyone um, at uh, some point. So that means that reporting after a fight is a little bit better. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to 100 percent like I mean, like, you won't be able to do the finger tracing thing, which I feel that. When we've seen evidence of this, it's something that I'd like to see what Kabam's kind of element of response is. I do massively appreciate Kabam doing this level of transparency, but there are further things that we would like to kind of know, especially, you know, as we said, like it doesn't... Kabam in some ways are saying that uh, how the player perceives is the problem versus what the issue is. However, though, Kabam are saying that uh, there are champion-based problems and whether or not that is windows of being able to hit champions whether or not it is certain types of debuff actions so like you know stun windows frame windows freeze windows stuff affecting it how devices and compatibility compatibility kind of all feature into that particular thing look if you want to play your game with so many kind of um mental not mental load but kind of like all this kind of level of paranoia that uh, that comes with it Look, I don't think I could ever play this game continuing on if I played with like so much paranoia about the way I play. And this is why sometimes if I'm not playing particularly well or I feel there's a particular bug or issue, I'll take a couple of days away from the game and see where it is. And this is the problem. Some months are good for some, some months are not good for others. But here's the thing. There are bugs and there are bugs that affect certain champions which affect your inputs and your perception of this. So I think there's there's a lot of work that still needs to be done with this, but that's the problem. That's the big word, isn't it, about this video? Perception. And perception from Kabam's standpoint and perception for us. But what we can do, the positive thing moving forward, is go, why don't Kabam to give us this level of information? Thank you for starting on the process of working a bit more with us on this one. But more work needs to be done. I, a lot of work really needs to be done on this to give uh, players a little bit more um trust and i think that's another word as well trust when it comes to trusting kabam to kind of fix a lot of these issues that affect the main thing about this game swiping and tapping that's the main thing about this game and how we perceive we play versus how kabam perceive we we are meant to play which is a problem but yeah if you are going to the forums and putting input issues make sure to put attacking champion defending champion game mode action that occurred immediately prior to the but the potential bug device you're playing on any other details you can include about the specific uh, encounter especially because kabam have said that if you do put input issues and nothing else it will be um ignored or removed um which i think is fair look kabam need information to then make a fix they can't there's a i can't swipe i quite can't tap like then there's like there's no there's no info but at the same time you know there needs to I'm, I'm hoping then kabam's action on it is is done correctly rather than going the player's at fault the player perceived <sighs> well you know i'll live with a sense of paranoia and as well as i've said before there is the other side of things when it comes to like look if you're providing evidence like this right here that super's put like you want to make sure that this is being dealt with because you can see swiping on the screen and gives a block and then releases it it's not and it it's not imp inputted as a dex or a swipe away so these are these things right here of identifying and making sure that they're dealt with correctly so yeah interesting i did enjoy reading it i must admit it was a very it was a very interesting and uh deep dive read i would recommend everybody going and checking it out but as i said there's great but more work needs to be uh, needs to be done to kind of give that level of trust and performance that we like to see, especially prior to like you know twenty twenty one, and that level of kind of 
mistrust when it comes to inputs and stuff like that. But anyway, it's interesting. Well done to Kaban for doing this. More, please. Love this transparency, but love to see a bit more as well. Check out some other content located on the screen right now. What's your thoughts on the uh, input issues? And I'll see you all very soon. Much love. Goodbye.